Hey Casey, what's going on? And for anybody else who might watch, I'm just recording this real quick to answer quick Casey's question because he's asking about, uh, you know, best resources for a manager based on growth incentives for the company. Um, looks like he, and this is a gym owner, Casey, just joined our gym. Casey, welcome and thanks for messaging me about the question. I figure I'm just going to record this because I think it would be good content for everybody. Um, but uh, he's got a manager who's got on a pay, uh, a flat like salary, like pay scale, um, but uh, you know hasn't doesn't really have I'm on like a set of an incentive based structure. So you know generally like in regards to like how to structure these that I found works best is like salary plus um, salary that you basically just want to line up their pay scale with like your company's revenue or income, right? So like first thing you got to do is obviously figure out where your business sits. And what your like baseline goal is, right? So, if I were to, you know, just pull out my fancy dancy like little drawing app here, uh, I probably could use Canva for this. Let me pull up Canva. Canva's got a drawing app thing now, so I'm just going to use it. Uh, where is it? at whiteboards? Here we go. Uh, it's blank whiteboard. There we go. But um, you know. So you've got um, draw. There we go. So you got a you know salary. You know at five uh, k. Here. Um, you pretty much, you, you know, say you want to pay them above this threshold. Say the goal is to like scale their salary up as the business grows. Like all you really want to do is anchor this to whatever your like short term baseline like needs are for that next level, right? So, you know, in the businesses like hierarchy of needs, you have the lowest tier here. You have, there's four stages. You have uh, just cash, right? So you have cash. Like, so what's, you want to establish like what's the business's like base needs for cash, right? Like break even, right? And then like stage two is profit, right? So like once you get break even, next you want to start making some cash over and above that, right? Um, and obviously like a, a certain amount of that's yours that you could start taking home that you fix. So you figure out what this amount is, right? If you're like, okay, cool, like to break even, we need to make 10k a month. You know, I want to make another 10K a month profit, which I think is a reasonable goal. And probably for most gyms, pretty pretty accurate, right? Like 10K overhead and then 10K profit, right? And then you can basically anchor that, that's 20K total between the two. You can basically anchor these two to this. And then like beyond that, you know, up here is like organizational efficiency, which is like building your team and then at the top here is like legacy and brand, right? Um, but right now we're just talking about like cash needs. Just establish like what your base needs are. And as long as your your coach is helping you meet whatever those base needs are, and like that's gonna be some conversation, some co combination of the business's break even plus what you need to make and like also the business needs to make because like the business has to keep a profit for itself outside of what it pays you. You can't just pull all the cash out every month. So if you're like, hey, uh, overhead's 10k. Uh, we want to put 20% profitability away. That's 12k, and then I want to make 6k up per month to cover my basic needs. That in total is 18k, right? So I would say, like 18k in this situation would be my base, right? And this is pretty much how all big companies structure like pay plans, right? They just start from the bottom up. There's no like hard and fast rule on this, um, and this you know this is pretty much base. Sorry, I'm taking so long to write here. I'm using a trackpad. If I had a mouse, it'd be a lot easier. And then you just basically tether growth beyond this as an as a uh, as a bonus or as a commission, right? So you could say, you know, from 18k to 25k in revenue, um, you get whatever, like 10%, 10% of the proceeds, right? Like 10% or like 15%. If it's a proceed, it's probably gonna be higher than this. So like say it's, 
you know, there's a 7K spread here from eight, you know, eight, 18K that's to 25K below 18K. She gets that's fixed based on this. But like, say she does 21K and she earns 300, or she she, she does 21K and earn, that's 3K more over the base. You know, what percentage of that 3K would you be willing to share with that person? You know. And you want to take into, into consideration like future scalable costs. That way you don't overpay this person and don't leave room to like hire somebody else if you need to hire another coach. So it's probably gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood like 10 to 20%, I'm gonna venture a guess, like 10 to 20%, right? But then as the business continues to scale, you know, you could be like, okay, 25 to 30K, you know, it can go up a little bit. So maybe this is like, you know, because it's you're not making a lot of profit still at this. This can be like 12%, right? Just like that. And then, you know, it could be at, you know, 25 to 30K, maybe they go to 15%. You know, again, this is of this, this amount, right? So they get 12% of the first 7K over base, and then 15%. I know this is a little complicated, but it's really not complicated math. This is not, this is basic algebra. This is not, so like, if you're listening to me and you're like, this seems really complicated, just know this is very, very simple, right? So like, they're basically getting 12% of the first 7K over their base. And then here they're getting 15% of the next 5K over tier A, let's call it. Okay, and this is tier B. And you just write it out in the pay plan. Right, super simple. And if you need to go, you know, write if it takes a couple paragraphs to like lay it out, do it. Right. So it could be 30k from here, 30k plus. You know, they're getting, you know, whatever, 17% from there on out above everything above 30k. Right. Because at that rate, you may not have any additional overheads. You know, from 30k to 50k, it might be pure profitability because you're just scaling the the volume of people going to classes at that point. Right. And uh, I would just make sure there's an asterisk in here <laughs> that's like, you know, we're allowed to revisit this in the future because there's going to be unknown foreseeable costs. Rents could go up. We reserve the right to renegotiate this, you know, and you could say this is a three month agreement or a six month agreement, whatever you want to do. Like you, you pretty much pick what you want to do. Um, and I know you're probably looking for a more like hard and fast answer of like, you know, give them X of X. But I think this, you know, spending the time to figure out like your scalable costs, and this goes back hand in hand with like in the school group we have, you know, in the classroom here, under the planning your attack, the annual financial projections warm map. That's why I think it's super important you do this. If you do your annual financial projections warm map every, every year and you extrapolate out your growth and you extrapolate out your costs and you account for all these things in the next year, you can confidently structure a pay plan out for the next 12, 12 months for the person that's gonna incentivize them to help you grow, right? Because if you tether a growth beyond your base, they're just gonna help you do it because for them, it's it, it removes the cap, right? Like one of the, um, you know, oldest sayings in like entrepreneurship is never cap your income, right? And it's the same when we hire people. If, we, if you hire people, give them the comfort of a base, but not make the base too comfortable and then make it so everything above is really gonna make their life a lot better. For this is a, this is a great structure. 5K a month for most people is not going to, uh, they're not gonna be living a super fabulous life. They're gonna be able to pay their bills and like meet their base needs. I think right in that 50 to 70K window is like base needs plus, you know, weekends out pretty much, right? Like, but they're not, they're not traveling to Ibiza three times a year on this kind of money, right? Now, if they wanna afford a trip to Ibiza, that's what they, that's what this is down here, right? And like maybe you also say like, hey, you get in year one, uh, one year of paid vacation based off your average salary for the last year. And then in year two, you get two years of paid vacation, right? That way they can, they get paid vacation included as they grow, it incentivizes them to increase their average pay, pay, uh, payment um, on their paycheck, which ultimately, which ultimately helps you grow, right? Because if you're getting 70 cents on every dollar as you scale or 80 cents on every dollar as you scale, then um, it's less you have to worry about. And they understand that like the, you have overheads and it's important to you know, let them know like, hey, I'm not, this is fair. This is based, you know, this is probably pretty accurate 
uh, rev share based on scale, as, based on the business scaling for a lot of different types of businesses. Um, and that like, you know, we're not keeping the rest. A lot of this is gonna get reinvested in the company. You know, if you if this person gets really good at sales, you can start investing in some advertising and then that money can go into advertising, which is gonna allow them to sell more. Um, you can tell them like, hey, yeah, some of this is gonna be profitability for us because we need to make money. But then uh, some percentage of this is also gonna go into making their job a lot easier too. So I think it's just having the conversation and being very clear about the pay plan and laying it out so like their income scales as you scale and as they help you scale, right? So it's like getting a business partner without any other risk of having to get up, give up any equity. Instead, you just build the pay plan to scale with your growth. Now I did this with my general manager at my last gym. Something, I can't remember what it was, but it was something pretty similar to this. Um, and uh, it worked very, very well. You know, the big thing is it has got to be someone that's motivated by money. If they're not motivated by money, then it doesn't matter what you do here. Um, it's always going to feel like you're doing something wrong. They got to be someone that like really wants to make, you know, you ideally want someone that wants to make 100K a year, like really, really bad and pay them this base. And then they go and they go after this, right? Because if they go after this, you're going to make a whole lot more money and they're going to make a lot more money and they're going to be super happy. And they're also not going to look to go anywhere else because like they're, they're getting essentially a piece of the company, right? They're getting a piece of your revenues. So highly recommend this for a general manager, especially if they're a keeper. If it's someone you want to keep, you have to find a way because the job market's very competitive right now. And we're not in a place yet where people are like hurting for jobs. Um, people can still, you know, people, talented people. It's not hard for a talented person to make 100K a year if they have basic management skills. So if they accumulate good management skills with you, you want to make sure that they can, you know, make at least I would say in most markets, you know, 75K a year, if, they, if they're there and they get to do it running a gym for you, they're probably not going to quit that job to go work in, you know, big tech or, or big, big corporate or whatever. Um, they're not going to give up the lifestyle even for a little bit more money. So, you know, that's what I would do. And I would think about benefits too for this person. Um, look at what insurance costs because it might be much cheaper for you to get insurance on a corporate plan than it would be for them. And if you could offer them what, you know, would be perceived as several thousands of dollars a month in value for a couple hundred dollars a month in value that can be really valuable to people. Um, I would also look at, um, again, uh, paid vacation because that's something like for them to go away from a week and you to hold down the fort for a week and just pay them while they're gone. Um, that's an incentive that normally corporate is reserving for them. So if you can tie tether those benefits in, they, they really lower how much you have to do here. But I think this this in combination, you know, plus benefits down here, uh, you know, sorry for the handwriting. Again, I'm using a trackpad here. Um, you stack all that. It's like a value stack, right? If you stack all that value, benefits, you know, insurance, we'll pay for your cell phone. Your cell phone, that, that's a big one for people. It costs $100 a month to pay for the cell phone plan. And, um, you know, and then in that in that regard, you know, like their cell phone, they get a ton of value out of. And that's one less thing they got to pay for. And you can write it off on your business. They can't write it off. You can write it off. You can write off cell phones. So it doesn't, you know, it's 70 cents on the dollar for you. And uh, for them, it's a dollar on the dollar in value. And then same thing with the other benefits, insurance, paid vacation, you know, one year and paid year one. And they can be, you can make them vest to that too. You could say like you get it after your first year of employment, you get a year of vacation. After your second year of employment, you get two, I'm sorry, you get a week of vacation. After your second year, you get two weeks of vacation. So just, I'm just spitballing here. I'm just throwing ideas at this point, but I just wanted to um, discuss how to structure a pay plan, uh, not just directly to your question here of like, you know, scaling their pay, but also other ways to provide value because at the end of the day, uh, manager growth incentives is huge. And the last thing I'll throw on top of this is like, don't forget that like you yourself can provide value to this person and it is viewed as very valuable if you, if you are positioned the right way with them. You know, uh, my last couple managers, you know, Joey with our team now and Sam at our gym, uh, both of them were people that were like, they were looking for mentorship and guidance and structure in their life. There are people that were in a phase of life that wanted, they wanted to work for somebody that could mentor them as well. And I don't know if that's a relationship you have with this person. But if it is the type of person where like they see value in your relationship and you can provide value to them, that also carries a lot of weight. So like I traditionally myself have looked for younger versions of myself that I knew I could groom uh, to be better people, better men if they were men. And we have had females on the team, of course, as well. And like, you know, nonetheless, like they still benefit from that structure and learning from you because they're looking up to you. So like I would invest in them and, and tell them like, hey, yeah, we're going to do team. You know, we tell them we're going to do you know, uh, continuing education and things like that, they find it super valuable. So 
the end of the day, you just want to stack value in all directions, not just directly as pay, but also in the form of benefits and other type of structure. When you do that, the person on the other end looks at it and like, okay, this would be a really cool place to work for a while and collectively across all this different value I'm getting, it's worth it to stay here. And then when they do that, they buy in fully. And when you get someone who's talented that buys in fully, it's going to make you know your life a lot easier. So good question, Casey. Hopefully that answers it. And if you have any other questions, please let me know.